So now you understand the fundamental drivers of diagenesis in carbonate settings. So what we're going to do in the next few classes is review the different environment of diagenesis and what can happen in them. Let's start with the marine environment, the normal marine environment, and what better place to do that than on the reef in the Guadalupian Mountains of Texas. So the location is called Walnut Canyon, and this is the entrance to Walnut Canyon. Slightly above us, you have the entrance to the world-famous Carlsbad Cavern National Park. And the reason we're here is because I'm standing again right in front of that Permian Reef from the Guadalupian. This Permian Reef was deposited in normal seawater, and a lot of the diagenesis that we will see in it is typical for normal marine diagenetic environment. So what happens in normal marine settings? What can we expect? So remember we saw early when we talked about the chemistry of carbonate precipitation this diagram that suggests that pressure and temperature impacts the saturation of carbonates and we talked about this in the previous class as well. And most of the settings we're looking at are effectively located in shallow water settings. And this shallow water setting in tropical zones where most of the tea fa factories are being produced is effectively a zone of net precipitation. What this means for early diagenesis in marine setting is that it will be dominated by precipitation of cement, not so much by dissolution and creation of porosity. So in the marine environment, mostly we're looking at precipitation of cement, occlusion of porosity, certainly if you are in tropical zone or in warm waters where you expect those carbonates to form. If you were on an atoll that was then sinking, a drowned carbonate platform, the story could be different because as you can see from this diagram, your atoll could go through different zones and dissolution would become possible after, after a certain um, depth in your basin, but that's mostly not the case. So therefore, for the marine environment, what's important is to understand the different cements that we can find. And here I show you a few examples of typical marine cement. Let's start with micrite, which is a magnesium car um, calcium, so a high mac calcium. So micrite comes from the process of micritization partially. And micritization is the transformation of grains into micrite. And, and the reason this happens early at deposition, it's a seafloor process, is because there are microorganisms, small uh, worms, small organisms that will basically bore the surface of the, of the carbonate. And this boring process produces very fine grain carbonates, micrite. So micritization is a very important process and often you will find micritization envelopes around grains like is the case in this example from the Bahamas but which you can also see here in this thin section from the Cretaceous where you see micritization envelope around the grains. So that's number one, micritization, one of the first process that happens. And again, the tea factory is characterized by a lot of micrite, by a lot of, of this early mud that then cement very quickly. So it's, it's both a sediment and a cement at the same time. First it's a sediment and then it lithifies within you know, a few years to thousands of years and you have a solid sediment. The second abundant mineral in this type of setting is aragonite. And aragonite is super saturated in the, in the modern ocean. If you look at ancient ocean, there are times where aragonite is not super saturated, but calcite is super saturated. So th there are variation there. And aragonite typically has a more fibrous nature than calcite. So here are two good examples of aragonite cement around Uwids. On the left, you can see that the um, aragonite grows as a needle-like cement around the grains. And you see in the center, all of a sudden, the shape of the, of the cement changes. 
The reason the shape of the cement changes is because you're looking at, at a 3D cut through a pore. So you can imagine that because this cement is growing all around the pore, when we get to the center of the cement, we're effectively intersecting the same needles in a transversal way and no longer on the long longitudinal axis. So that's why you see this difference between the two sides. Now, on the right picture, it's actually a magnification of the same ooids than on the left picture, but with the cross nickels. And the point I want to make is that this aragonite grows syntactically with the grain. So it's a syntactical growth um, clo close to the grain. So essentially the aragonite is orientated in the same crystallographic axis than the aragonite within the ooid. So very interesting, very important very typical early marine cement in terms of their, um, their habits, their, their geometry, their size, their, their uh, shape. And then there is a very intriguing type of cement called a botryoidal cement. And this is one of the reasons I'm standing in front of the, of the Permian Reef here, because this picture is of botryoidal cement right behind me. You can see these are also often referred to as fan-shaped cement. They're typically aragonitic or high magnesium calcite at the position, and they are unique to reef. You need a large cavity and a lot of water circulation to form those cements. And here in uh, Texas, in, in this Permian Reef, they form a significant component of the reef structure. And you see they're pretty large. They're about six centimeters across, so they're absolutely spectacular cement. So here are two other examples of botryoidal cements. These are slightly smaller than the ones I showed you before. The left one is still a high magnesium calcite botryoidal cement in a thin section. See the scale is half a millimeter. And on the left, it's actually a botryoidal cement that was um, calcified. So this cement was originally aragonitic. The reason we think it was aragonitic is because you have preserved fiber-like structures in it, that's pointed by the blue arrows, but now its mineralogy is calcite. It has been essentially recrystallized from aragonite to calcite. And that's another theme in diagenesis is you can have constant resetting of the system. Things are sometimes preserved, but often they are actually recrystallized into something else. But that, those botryoidal cements are really classic marine cement. If you see a botryoidal cement, you're sure you're looking at a marine cement, you are also pretty sure you're looking at a reef because these are the only conditions where we know we can find those botryoidal cements.